Hi, my name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money, the base, iron your mind, or in your hand. It's one of those words they don't translate correctly. It's been really hot here in Tucson. It's like 110 degrees today. And uh, there's the word karagma that's mistranslated. No one buys or sells without the money, the base, on your mind, or in your hand. And there's the Greek English lexicon by Liddell and Scott that shows you the word karagma means the impress on the coin, or stamp money coin. Oh boy, what a week. There's been a lot of bad news. I guess uh, maybe we'll just start with this weekly. The weekly had a front page story about poverty in Tucson, and they were saying it was written by Dave, Dave Devine and Molly McCasson, and they're saying that one quarter of the population in Tucson is... Uh, off the charts poor. They had a good graph in here. Here it is. It's reliable statistics. They compare it to other cities too. So you can see how the poverty compares uh, in southwestern cities. Okay, there you go. And uh, Tucson down there. And uh, Pima County is 19%. It's not quite as bad. But um, we're even worse off than El Paso. But county-wise, we're tied. I guess they have more rural farming there. But uh, then here's the United States um, poverty levels. And the uh, United States, in 1970, it was Arizona was 15. And then... Uh, we go back here, United States poverty levels 14%, Arizona 16, Pima County 19, and City of Tucson 23%. They interviewed uh, Brian Flagon here, who I really consider a saint. He works at that Casa Maria soup kitchen down, I don't know, around 29th Street or so down there. But he's been there for like, as long as I know, like at least 25 years. And uh, he's been handing out food baskets. I think he says he hands out 800 food baskets a day. People have to come out in that hot sun down there to get it. And uh, then another one of my friends went down to the food stamp office on Tool Avenue. And he said there was like 300 people in there. He went there at 8.30 and didn't get out until uh, like 12.30. Had to wait in line. Well, this is kind of uh, a long time ago, well, like in 1990, I went to these Saturday morning breakfast club meetings, and this guy, Bo Gritz, he's uh, the America's most decorated um, Green, Bay Com Green Beret commander, and this book is called Called to Serve, and it's Profiles in Conspiracy from John F. Kennedy to George Bush, and it's he get he's he's pretty good. It's a pretty big book, and um, when he first came here to Tucson, I uh, he gave a little speech about Kung Sha, and the uh, and he was Kung Sha was like the organizer of the uh, go in the Golden Triangle, where they have um, opium, and that was during the Vietnam War. But anyway. I told him about, he talk, talked a little bit about the Kennedy assassination, and uh, what he said wasn't really true. It was like propaganda, the disinformation. So I told him, I says, uh, give me your address, and I'm, I'm kind of an expert on this Kennedy assassination. And I wrote this book, or I wrote this article about it a long time ago, too. Let me see when the date is on this. Uh, 1987, winter 1987. And I had these pictures of E. Howard Hunt and Frank Sturgis. I mailed this to um, Bo Gritz. And it, it's all about, whoops, darn it, there you go. <laughs> and uh, it's all about um, the coup d'etat in America. And he uh, and Bo Gritz cut these pictures out. You can see, I'll show them to you in a minute. He cut these pictures out as well as this picture and uh, put it in his book. And he mentioned a lot of the stuff I mentioned, too. Here's those pictures, so you can tell he cut them right out of my article. And these guys, E. Howard Hunt and Frank Sturgis, 
where there's another picture he cut out. You can tell the S is, is a little bit damaged there. And here you can see the S is a little bit damaged down there. So he made good use of my article. Plus, he, he wrote a lot more in there. He tied in George Bush Sr., who was the head of the CIA, but not at the time Kennedy was killed. George Bush Sr. Uh, was in the oil business, and he called his business Zapata Oil. And uh, the Bay of Pigs invasion was called Operation Zapata. And two of the ships that they used to land on the beach that the Bay of Pigs invasion was, um, oh, at, one of them is named after his wife, the Barbara, and the other one was, um, I think, after his mother. But um, so, I mean, George Bush Sr. is implicated in the assassination of uh, Kennedy, and Nixon was in Dallas the day before the assassination. And um, it was a big cover-up. It was like, uh, and then right after that, the uh, Vietnam War started getting going, and it's kind of like, you know, what were we fighting for? There was a really good song by Country Joe and the Fish that was popular. He sang it at Woodstock called um, The Fixing to Die Rag. And I think it's like, one, two, three, what are we fighting for? Don't ask me, I don't give a damn. Next stop is Vietnam. But uh, Bo Greitz, uh, he was in the Green Berets over there in Vietnam, and he observed by, you know, he observed this heroin trafficking. The CIA was running heroin out of um, the Golden Triangle there. So you kind of wonder if maybe they were fighting over this Golden Triangle. And, and, you know, this heroin is very profitable business. And then right after we lost the Vietnam War, the heroin production moved over to, uh, to Afghanistan. And then after the Taliban eradicated the heroin, we, United States, invaded Afghanistan, and the opium production has never been higher. But um, here's another horrible thing related to heroin. I saw this on the Stormfront website that somebody posted this thing about uh, these heroin addicts that, that uh, don't have enough money over in Russia. They buy these, these headache pills that contain codeine and then they make some kind of process using iodine and uh, some other chemicals to change the composition of this codeine and then they shoot it up. They call it crocodile and they also call it coaxal and um, it rots people's flesh off. And so I posted a video on my Facebook page that shows some guy that the, the flesh just rotted off his leg below his knee. So they had to amputate his leg. And, and then there's other stuff on the internet that like this woman, her whole bone was showing. Her whole bone was showing in this arm. And um, then she had all these like big huge sores and the Russian doctor was filming all this and he was treating her wounds and they uh, but it's a very tragic thing it's most of, it's not the people in Moscow so much as, as far as I can know they said it was like the poor Russians that live like in in the far away from the big cities there they don't have the money but um, the article said that one third of all the heroin deaths are in the Soviet Union in the world. So um, it's all coming from Afghanistan. It's like chemical warfare. Of course, uh, Karl Marx said that religion is the opiate of the masses, and uh, it's, opium is a stupefier. So, you know, religion is like a stupefier. If your religion isn't rational, I mean, then it's not of God. And I told you before that. Jesus is the logos or logic of God, and that's another one of those words they don't translate correctly. A lot of, well, people argue with me about this. You know, they say that that uh, oh no, it means word. But here you can see, this is from an etymological dictionary, and the logos is in John one one. And most of the translations say that in the beginning was the word, but it. Uh, down here they show that it rarely means word. And I've been trying to get Wikipedia changed in the article about logos, but I'm not having... I got kicked off there, so I can't really do it, but you can see that logos means reasoning or discourse, speech. And uh, 
But but it, it's logic. I mean, like the truth will never die and it'll rise again, and that's what the metaphor is. I I tell people that I don't believe Jesus existed. There's no real evidence that he existed, and people will argue with me and they'll say, "Oh yes, Josephus said something, and Tacitus said something." But they um, and even in the Talmud they say things like. The, the rabbis are pondering over who this Jesus was and uh, they wonder if he was this guy named Judas and Josephus mentioned a guy named Judas who was like a revolutionary and Jesus was a revolutionary he upset the tables of the money changers and um, called them all thieves and today the thieves are on Wall Street with their high-speed trading and their derivatives and funny money and interest rates and Adolf Hitler was against charging interest on loans, which is possibly, well, one of the reasons they wanted to get rid of him. And uh, so he uh, didn't want to have these these Jews there. Like every European nation has kicked the Jews out at one time or another. I've got a chart here that shows you. And when they kicked them out, they, they all went like to Poland. They're, I should make a copy of this other chart I saw on the internet recently. And it shows where all the Jews went after they got kicked out of these countries and ended up in Poland. So you had a lot of poor um, Jews living there and they wore those black calf cans. And they didn't really assimilate very well. They didn't fit into the society and they didn't speak German or anything. And they were like the gypsies and there's a lot of trouble in Europe with the gypsies. I was reading an article that said that um, on the Stormfront website that a bunch of gypsies, gypsies just descended on this farmer's land and um, the city told them, look, if you don't get these people off your land, the land there, we're going to take you to court. And they were, I mean, they were punishing this man and he didn't want these gypsies on his land. So anyway, the, the real solution to all the world's problems is to eliminate money. And of course, anybody who believes in eliminating money gets slandered. And I've got, like, on my website, a bunch of famous people who believed in eliminating money. Plus, I have this, this, like, I copied some of them in, onto this, page, these pages here. You can see the Buddha uh, said it's, um, it's an offense for a monk to buy various articles with gold or silver. And then uh, Plato in Plato's Republic. They didn't, uh, the, the, the rulers of the Republic, the aristocrats, did not touch gold and silver. And I have a quotation by Gaddafi here. And Jesus, of course, said that you can't serve God or money. You'll either love the one or hate the other or hold to the one who despise the other. But the Pharisees, who loved money, heard all this and scoffed. There it is, the green book, Muammar Gaddafi. And uh, it talks about when the, it's almost similar to what Friedrich Engels wrote in the Principles of Communism. And Friedrich Engels, as you know, was the man who supported Karl Marx, Karl Marx's studies. And Karl Marx had some things to to say about eliminating money, but they both talk about when production increases so much that uh, society will reach a stage where money becomes superfluous. And there was a chart I put up on my Facebook page that that, that said that that you can uh, that the the top one percent of the income in the United States it's just like a graph and it shows it just spiking and, and during these bad times they're making all kinds of money now they're really cleaning up but and then at the very bottom is the wages of the average worker and they're just it's like flat. But the productivity has gone up a little bit. And none of that productivity, the benefit of that productivity goes to the workers. It all goes to this top 1%. So it's like they're trying to make America a third world country with no middle class. And I don't really appreciate all these laborers, illegal people coming in this country to, to drive the wages down and take jobs away. It's, very easy that they could pay a penny a pound more for various products like apples or peaches and and pay the workers a, a whole lot more because when I worked picking apples the, I filled like a a bin, a bin that was like four feet by four feet by four feet and I must have been 
maybe 800 pounds in there and I only got like eight dollars for picking this whole bin they could have easily paid us a penny a pound more and I could have doubled my money but uh, they, they didn't do that they didn't pay by the pound they paid by the bin so you know it's just like modern machinery should have made things much easier for us so that we didn't have to work too hard it used to be during the Great Depression that during that time that it took like I think a quarter of the people lived on farms if not more and so a lot they could ma <clears throat> grow their gardens and and even though they were poor they still had chickens and they could grow their vegetables and barter stuff but like today we can have all these people living in the cities and like the, these cities are Babylon and uh, you know I mean I don't really you know it's like this people talk about Bible, Bible Bible prophecy you know but I don't really believe that it's just more like common sense that you know civilizations rise and fall you know, like Oswald Spengler wrote a book about it and Arnold Toynbee wrote a book about it and this guy named Gunther Stent wrote a book about it that um, you know you reach a certain stage of um, of hedonism or you know it's just kind of there's no real driving purpose in life like during the Middle Ages people had a faith you know and they build these great cathedrals and you know they'd take years hundreds of years to build these cathedrals but today you know it's all just throwaway stuff and it's all profit and there's so many people are unemployed they're not even you know enjoying the I mean I believe that people have a natural instinct to want to create and uh, make things better and make things better for the world so that their children can have a nice place to live but this profit and money is just like you know it's not it's just you know there's so much bad that money causes and like in St. Thomas More's Utopia they didn't have money and Thomas More I think I have that quote over here somewhere that they just all these things would disappear if we got rid of money and, uh, so let's see it's kind of a long quote maybe I don't have it there it is yeah this talks about uh, all these things you know we have prostitution and people sell these bad drugs and they make cigarettes and so and then they rob and steal and cheat and lie and then we have these people on Wall Street that aren't producing anything they're just typing in things and they have these sophisticated computer programs that that trade on milliseconds they'll trade and buy something and then sell it really quick and they they have a high-speed internet connection so that they can get the information seconds faster than anybody else so they can see where the trend is going and buy and sell million, hundreds and thousands of times a day and make money I think they're saying that 60% of the trades on Wall Street are these um, high-speed trading and they're not producing anything and they're making all this money. It's like, what does this top 1% of the people in the United States that are earning all this money really do? You know, I mean, and not only that, but like, do these CEOs really deserve to make 300 times more than somebody on the factory floor? Like in Japan, the, it's a little bit more equitable, but but still, it's this whole money situation. You think there's like bankers, bookkeepers, accountants, salesmen, sales clerks, all these people that aren't really producing anything. So, like, uh, there was an article in the New York Times about these pension funds and how they're the state pension funds. And there's like a big gap in how much money they have and, like, and how much money they'll need to raise. It's almost like an impossible thing. So, I mean, this is just another brick in the wall, so to speak, that's crumbling, this crumbling wall. It says, how much each state needs to increase taxes per household to eventually fund pensions. They'd have to raise taxes, $2,400 in New Jersey. And then here's the uh, returns that the state would need to have to get enough money, you know, the interest rate. And in Wyoming, they'd need to make 20% interest. And then these, this shows you how much money they're behind in their pensions. 
Well, there's all kinds of news like that that, that just doesn't look very good for the future. What's this about here? Uh, oh, it's about how much people pay into Medicare or Medicaid. Like a 56-year-old couple pays in $140,000, but they get back $430,000. And uh, Medicare's unfinanced liabilities are more than $30 trillion. So they're trying to figure out how they can fund this. It would uh, hit the costs of just shot up. I don't even have any health insurance. And uh, so most people go bankrupt because, because of medical bills. Let's see what we have here. Oh, this is about the global drug war. Jimmy Carter came out against this, uh, you know, this drug war. He said, Jimmy Carter said when he left office, there were 500,000 people incarcerated in America. And then at the end of 2009, there was nearly 2.3 million. And uh, we have the highest uh, incarceration rate in the world. And a lot of that is because of drugs. Well, there's a kind of a big article. It's kind of unusual to see this. It was on page A6 of the June 21st New York Times. And it uh, shows this building. Oh. Oh, let's just see it here. It's a um, great big building that Adolf Hitler built for his workers along the Baltic Sea here. Here's a map showing where they were. And they were going to have, uh, they were going to use this to give the workers, they had 10,000 rooms in there, and they were going to let the, the workers take vacations here for two weeks. And But uh, that's another reason I think they got rid of Hitler, because he was doing, uh, he was, it was National Socialism, and, and the, it was beneficial to the workers. They had a whole lot of benefits, plus uh, Hitler was against charging interest on loans. It was one of the National Socialist Party program planks. I think it was number 11. If you Google National Socialist Party program, you'll see that he was against charging interest. And if you ever look at one of these mortgage uh, finance charts you end if you know if the house costs you say a hundred thousand dollars by the time you've paid all the interest it comes out to like a hundred and sixty thousand dollars depending on what your interest rate is but uh, there's also a big three-page story about a warming planet struggles to feed itself I don't think uh, I underlined anything but they do have a graph here that shows you that there was a billion people that uh, were undernourished worldwide. And it's declined some, but it's going up again. And that was in uh, around 2010. You know, there'd be plenty of food to go around if we stopped eating meat. It's like all that corn they grow in uh, Iowa and is, is fed to cows and pigs. And same with the uh, soybeans. We could live on corn and soybeans. I've told you that before. Here's something that's kind of weird. I think I might have showed you this before. It's the the growth rate. I mean, the silver. The price of silver is kind of like shot up even more than gold, at like 180 percent there of what it used to be. Let's see, risen so much faster than gold. But uh, you know, you can't eat gold or silver. It's it's like you know, the people talk about. Uh, how they're, uh, you know, what are they going to do? Take some gold in there? It's easy to counterfeit. They have, they have some new money up in uh, Canada now that's made of plastic, and they were showing it on the internet. The Canadian government made a video about it, but you know, and that's why we don't have thousand-dollar bills is because of this drug trade. It, it would make it easier to haul money, drug money around if they had thousand dollar bills. It'd probably be easier to catch people too, you know, I mean, well, you could always use the money to buy a car or something, but uh, anyway, my name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hands. One of those words they don't translate correctly. And I sure hope it rains here pretty soon. We had these huge fires around Arizona that, because it's so dry here. Bye. <laughs>